Hello everyone, today we are going to show you how to set up your own VPN server using a simple $5 a month DigitalOcean VPS server. This tutorial is broken into four sections. The virtual VPS server setup on DigitalOcean, the open VPN server installation and configuration, the client creation and setup for Windows, Android and Linux, Ubuntu specifically in this demonstration, and a small section on securing your VPS with the DigitalOcean built-in firewall at the end. The instructions provided will work equally well with any other VPS provider as well, and any version of Ubuntu or most common versions of uh, Linux. So let's go ahead and get started. Once logged in, click on droplets on the left-hand side and create droplet. Under choose an image, select Ubuntu 18 or later, and basic as the machine type. Then scroll across to the left and pick the $5 a month option. Then pick a location for your VPS. I'm selecting Amsterdam here, but you can pick whatever suits you, ideally located in your own country. We are going to use a password to secure our SSH access. Ideally, you should use a cert to secure your VPS in production. But as this is a demo and we will be deleting the droplet afterwards, it's fine for test purposes. We are going to choose a host name and click create droplet. Okay, so our VPS is created and powered on. And this is the static IP address associated with the droplet. We're going to use this IP address to SSH into the droplet in the next section and install the OpenVPN server. I'm going to use the PuTTY application to connect to the new server using SSH. PuTTY is a free tool and can be downloaded and installed using the link in the description. We will also use WinSCP later in the video and the download link for this program is also in the description. Now we'll just open the browser. We're going to just do a search for GitHub Open VPN hyphen install. Again, the link for this is in the description. And all we need here is one script to run our install. I'm just going to take it here and copy it. And this script, once we execute it, will actually run through the download and installation of OpenVPN server. Uh, just us having to answer a couple of simple questions. So we're just going to paste it into our shell here. And we just need to change what it so it becomes executable as well. So we'll copy that line of text too. Just flick back to our shell, and press return. Okay, so now we're just going to execute it. So we're going to type sudo o, and it's going to run through the default wizard. It's going to ask us a couple of questions. You can see it's picked up our default IP address, and it's just prompted to be enabled NAT. We'll say no. We'll take default option one, port one one nine four, and UDP. And then 11 avant garde DNS for our DNS servers. You can change these later on if needed. And press return. A no to compression. No to change in the encryption settings. And just press any key to continue. It'll run through the installer and finish. Okay, so we're installed. We're just going to add an initial client. We call it my client one. Press return. We want to use a password, so we'll select two. We'll enter the passphrase for our VPN client. We'll just pick a decent password here and confirm it. And it'll tell us where the configuration file is saved to. If we want to run the script again, we can use it to add another user. You can just press the up arrow to so just bring the previous command back up. And then just press return. It'll run the script again. And this time we're just going to add a second user. You can add as many users as you like, and um, they'll each have their own config files. So same again, we'll just call it my client 2 this time. Again, option 2 for user password, enter a passphrase, and confirm it. And that's it. Uh, incidentally, if you have any issue um, with saving this file, uh, if you create a home root directory, uh, the very first time it should uh, Ensure that the files save into home root. I'm just running this as a as a root user for demo purposes. Okay, and that's it. If we CD into home root and we do an ls, we can see our .ovpn files for client one and client two that we've created. 
So we now need to get these off the box and onto our client machines. So we're going to use WinSCP into the box and grab our config file. So here we have our IP address of our server. Click OK. We log in as our root user and our password. Okay, so let's just go to our directory under home and root. And we'll grab one of our files here. We'll grab my client one. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag this out onto the desktop of our Windows 10 PC. And then we'll load the OpenVPN client after this and drop the configuration file in. And uh, we'll make our connection. So we've just dropped that over onto the desktop. Again, the WinSCP uh, download link is in the description as well. Okay, so you can see our my client one file is now on the desktop. We'll close our WinSCP. We'll go to openvpn.net uh, community hyphen downloads and we're going to select our OpenVPN client for Windows. In this case, it's Windows 10 we're using 64 bit. So we'll select the OpenVPN installer for our operating system. Again, we're just going to click on it and download it. Click on save. It's downloaded into the bottom left on our browser. Okay, we'll just minimize our browser. We'll run this. Okay, it's just yes to continue. It's a straightforward install. I'm gonna take all the default options. So again, it's just, let me minimize that. It's next, I agree. Next, next, finish. Install. Okay, so our OpenVPN client software is installed. Now we just need to put the configuration file we've downloaded into the client and we'll be able to make a connection to our OpenVPN server and then see our traffic be routed through our box. So let's click on yes. And it's just telling us there's no config file. So we're gonna drop a config file into that path now. Okay, so we're just gonna copy our config file. Into the config folder and paste. Okay, so we just pasted our OVPN file in. Just gonna close that. Now we're just gonna run our OpenVPN GUI as administrator. And you can see down the bottom here, it says it's all run, ready running in the tray. So we'll just go down here and click on our up arrow just to bring up our GUI. Just right click it there. And we'll just hit connect. It's important to run the GUI as administrator as well in Windows 10. We just add our password we added previously. And it just runs through the negotiation process. And you can see it's now connected. So if we open a web browser, we should now see our traffic going through the IP address of our VPS in Amsterdam. So let's go to what is my IP address.com and just verify that. Okay, so as you can see, it has the IP address of our DigitalOcean VPS. Uh, things were based in Amsterdam. So the traffic successfully routing through our OpenVPN client tunnel. And that's really all there is to it. Um, we're gonna go ahead now in a moment and show you the same configuration using Android. And uh, after that, Ubuntu. So if we just right click, uh, we can just disconnect and that's the end of this section. Okay, so we've plugged in an Android phone. We've gone to the Play Store and we've downloaded and installed OpenVPN for Android. 
we're just to select open and it's going to prompt us to just create a profile the first time we use it we'll just call it my vpn server and we'll press ok and we still need to get the config file from our desktop onto the android phone so what we're going to do is we're going to just dump the file to google drive and then sync it to the phone and uh, then we'll be able to just import it directly so i'll just do that now i've just opened my drive i'm just going to select upload files we'll take the file off the desktop or out of the config folder and we just upload it into the google drive and now we'll be able to just import it inside our OpenVPN client. Okay, so you can see in my drive it's there. Import. And we can now see we have my client one loaded under our profile. Okay, so it's prompted us for the key. It's again, it's the same password used the first time for our my client one user. And we can see it's gone through the negotiation sequence and it's completed successfully. So now again, the same as in the last video, if we open a web browser on our mobile phone, we should see the IP address is that of our Amsterdam server. So we'll go to whatismyip.com again, and there you are, you can see our IP of our server in Amsterdam. And that's it, that's the end of this section. Coming up next is the Ubuntu section. Okay, so we have our Ubuntu test VM paired up here. We're just gonna do the same as we did in the last uh, Android demonstration. We're just gonna copy uh, our OpenVPN config file onto the Ubuntu host first. Um, we'll just use Google Drive again. We'll download it and save it into uh, the documents folder. Okay, we'll just hit save. Okay, so in Ubuntu, Network Manager already has a VPN option available and built in, which supports OpenVPN. So we're just going to use that. And we're going to say import from file. And we're just going to browse our documents. And you can see our My Client OpenVPN file here. We just click open. It imports all the settings and the certs. And it just asks us to input our password. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then click on add. And then if we toggle the switch, over to the right to on the vpn will automatically connect you can see it's listed under network manager there you have the option to turn it off there as well okay so our vpn is established again if we open a browser we should be able to see our traffic being routed through our server in amsterdam so we'll do the same thing again we we'll go to what is my ip and again you can see our amsterdam server ip address there and that's it, um, that's all there is to it. We've covered in this section, uh, we've covered OpenVPN on Windows and on Android and on Ubuntu. Coming up in the next section, we're gonna have a quick look at the DigitalOcean firewall. It's an easy way for us to firewall our VPN server and just allow access to port 1194 for our OpenVPN server communication and uh, just SSH for remotely administering the box. So we've gone back to our DigitalOcean web front end and we're just going to create a firewall for our droplet. So if we click over onto our SSH section here just first, uh, we'll just do a quick IP tables minus L and you can see that the policies are open. So we're going to go back to our web front end and we're going to create a firewall in front of that. So again, go back over to the left, click on networking, click on firewalls, click on create firewall. Okay, so we're going to give it a firewall a name. I'm just going to say allow SSH from anywhere. Again, you could restrict this by IP address to your own WAN IP address if you had a static IP address at home or use certificate-based access. Okay, we're gonna add one more rule, and that's a UDP, port 1194, which was the port we chose for our OpenVPN server to listen to connections on. So we're just gonna add that in here. And then 
we're going to tag the name of our virtual server to apply this to down the bottom. The outbound rules are left open on the firewall. That's traffic leaving the VPS out to the internet, which is what we want in this case. We don't want to restrict outbound ports, only ports that can communicate in. Okay, so we're going to tag our droplet called VPN server. Here it is here. Okay, and we're just going to create firewall. Okay, so the firewall is now applied to the droplet and there's the default rules and the additional rules we created as well added to it. So now our box is protected from the outside without having to put a custom IP tables rule on the actual droplet itself. And this is easy for folks who aren't familiar with using IP tables or UFW firewalls. Um, it just allows you to do it from a nice simple web front end. Okay, and that's it folks. That's the end of the video. Um, we also have a video on WireGuard VPN as well for those of you who are interested. Uh, I'll leave the link uh, above here in the description and you can go and check that out as well. It offers a, an easier configuration and a slightly faster VPN setup than uh, OpenVPN, which may or may not suit your use case. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, it helps the channel. Thanks for watching.